Well, welcome to Beers with Rich. I'm Rich, founder of Under the Radar Report. It's great to be back. You're all wondering, how's Get Rich with Rich going? I bet you're all wondering. I bet everyone in the world is wondering. Well, the good news is we got off to a flyer with Ansarada, which I mentioned only last week. This week, up 30% on a takeover bid. I mean, it just doesn't get better. I bought $500 worth of an ETF um, A200, like an ASX200 linked ETF, um, and CSL in my um, in my determination to supercharge the $500 strategy, which is instead of investing once a month, I'm investing once a, once a week. Um, and I'm also... Um, investing a thousand dollars in the stocks that we um, tip as a, recommend as a buy. So so far we're up to thirty stocks. That includes the ten we rate as um, best buys. And you know the point. The first point to make is that yes, I've seen it for myself. Small caps are on sale. That's for sure. And Serata proves the point. As does the other stocks I mentioned in this week's report, Damstra, Pacific Current, City Chic, A2B, Southern Cross Electric, Probiotech, Volpara. You know, I could go on and on and on, and I will, but you get the idea. So at this point, we are in mid-February. We're in reporting season, but at this point, it's the big caps that that are getting all the press. Well, mostly it's, you know, the big caps get all the press. But certainly, it's the big caps that have reported the big numbers. So, the small caps tend to report, you know, later in the month, right at the end. So, I want to talk about three stocks that you need to consider for your portfolio. What we're doing is building up your base. You know, that's what building wealth from scratch, you know, our our course, that's what it's about. Building up your base so you can add high growth, high growth um, small caps. It's what we're doing building up your protection. Yes, it's about timing, but it's also about being able to afford to take risk. And that's what building a base of blue chips is about. The first two I've mentioned, CBA and CSL, names very familiar to you. Well, these are two stocks that have great businesses, among the best business models I'm aware of. Um, they're gorillas in their respective areas. CSL still represents value. CBA is a good stock to be buying at, when you're building a portfolio. It's great for your core portfolio. Like ever since it floated in the early 90s, ever since I can remember, um, well, actually CBA was one of the first stocks I owned. I think I got bought it. I think I got given it by my, my grandfather you know, out of the float. Um, but ever since I can remember, analysts have said it's overvalued, even back when it was priced at $10 when it listed. Why is that? Well, on metrics, CBA looks expensive because people paying a premium. Why is that? Because it's got low unit costs, because it's got bigger scale than anyone else. And that's only increased over time. Like basically, this company is one of the best run companies, banks in the business, because it has scale and also it modernized its IT systems early. So under, I think, Ross McEwen, who now runs uh, NAB, Back, back in the day, he was getting ahead of the curve. Like, I look at CBA like I look at Rio Tinto. Like, both are giants, so they both have low unit costs, so they can both get away with being aggressive on pricing and aggressive on getting growth um, when others can't. So, CSL, on the other hand, well, that's a different kettle of fish. New guy at the helm. What hasn't changed is it's fantastic bearings business or blood products business and that's what some might call you know it's it's key business the other ones get press at times like certainly what got a lot of press was um one of its um drugs that failed i think it was the heart attack treatment that failed its late stage testing but that's the risk that you've got with these sort of stocks the key to csl is it's getting the big money now now that um, people are back giving blood post-COVID, this, you know, this company is turning into a cash flow, flow machine. So you've got that cash flow, then you've also got, you know, that kind of optionality, so to speak, with the, with the you know, the drugs pipeline. So I really like CSL. Then there's West Farmers, another great stock to consider for your core. Why is that? 
because it thinks long term. West Palmers has a huge portfolio of businesses, but and, and it can it can make long term bets, and it's got cash cows delivering money now. What was outstanding in the recent result was Kmart. I mean, I we've long been fans of Kmart. We go to Kmart. We love the you know the Anko home brand. Basically, we go to Kmart because we see loads of products and lots of value. I mean, what, what more do you want in the retail life? So West Farmers also has a lithium business, as we all know. That gives it long-term potential. Then there's its retail juggernaut, Bunnings. Well, we live near a Bunnings. And uh, mind you, I go there more than I'd like. Let's not, uh, need I say more. I mean, I can't say any more than that. I've got to go back to Bunnings today. But there you go, three core holdings that can boost your ability and my ability to get rich with rich. So make some trades today. Caroline, Caroline and I call today Finance Friday. Why? We do our finance admin portfolio checklist, do some trades, talk to you, have a beer. Speaking of which, hiatus beers, Pacific Ale. It's another zero alcohol number. Well, I think I drank it last week. I liked it so much. I got another one out of the fridge. So here's to Finance Friday. Here's to Get Rich with Rich. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again soon.